check it. Whether it's your first time or you need a retreat, this is your place for video games and fresh beats. LB and me, LB and me, last benevolence of Kimmy and me. Nope. So this game is uh, Hand of Fate 2. It's um, like a choose your own adventure, but kind of mixed in with a little bit of dice rolling and action RPG combat the combat's kind of like Batman Arkham so if you're familiar with the Batman Arkham games Kimmy Amy has, hasn't really played any of them yet but yeah well, um, it's kind of like that um, but it's kind of weird because a lot of the game is through this dialogue that you're reading so it's uh it's pretty cool it's 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 easier to, to show than tell, definitely. This is one of those games. So what I'm trying to do is I'm actually here testing out my controller. Um, I just got this Surge um, wireless switch controller. I've been kind of on a search for you know a switch controller that doesn't drift. Um, so anyway, we're gonna test this out and maybe play a little bit and see how it goes. There's also death building. Yeah, I forgot that part. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I, I feel like it, it could be a highlight for some. Um, some some people have really gotten into the deck building genre, but for me, um, that's not the, the real highlight of this game. The deck building is pretty cool though, because you basically you'll have different encounters based on what cards you have in your deck at the time. So as you can see, I have 10 different encounter cards here. And these different encounters are like events, like story events. And you would read them out kind of like a choose your own adventure. And then they all have like different benefits. Like if you choose certain things or if you have certain outcomes, then you will, like different things will happen. You'll get different benefits from them. For example, if I make the right choices on this card right here, the cunning man, then I may gain a blessing or I may gain some equipment or something like that. You know, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, the, the idea is to pick the right cards for the situation. So for this quest that I'm going on, or challenge as they call it, I want to prepare for combat against northerners. I want to demonstrate great precision um, basically there's like this precision event and I want to prepare for that um, maybe use cards that will give me an edge in precision another thing here would be like being prepared for chance card gambits so that's another challenge you can uh, run into and so it's kind of you want to make sure you're preparing for that. So for me, what I'm doing is I'm carrying this companion with me, the blacksmith. She gives me uh, this huge success perk where I'm able to duplicate one of the chance cards. And then when they're swapping the cards around, then I, I can, you know, have a better chance of choosing the right card. That's an example of that. Precision, I don't really have anything for, for precision yet, um, I don't think. There we go, jousting armor. So optionally, I can retry any precision gambit. So that helps me for those. So as you can see, like building your, your deck is pretty important for the quest that's going to be, you know, undertaken. So one thing I like to do is I like to use cards that have like the same kind of events that are related to what I'm trying to what I'm trying to build my deck for. So for example, um, I have Ariadne, I think that's how you pronounce her name. And she has that huge success perk we talked about. So like if I pick an encounter, one smart thing to do is to pick encounters that uses the chance card event because then, you know, you're kinda giving yourself the edge for for those different events so that's just something I like to do um, it doesn't always work in my favor um, as you'll probably see here um, but sometimes it does work so we're, we're gonna check it out all right 
think that's good enough. How about that? Any game that is sufficiently complex can become another game. We see that here. You and I must consider every option. I do not know what the usurper has prepared, but we will be ready. Okay. So... The heroic Imperial General Roldan the Fierce has dis disappeared in the northern mountains during a diplomatic mission. A company has been sent to search for Roldan and his entourage. You have been enlisted as a scout for the group, given your experience with dealing with the Northerners. You head off to catch up to the reinforcements who have established a small camp just outside of M Empire territory. Cool. Um, Alright. Okay. So, I'm guessing I can't go there? Let's look at the map. So, what is this supposed to be? <laughs> okay. You are brought to the commander of the fort, Salus Pompeius Trinico. Oh, that's a nice name. His large bulk is ill at ease with the thin mountain air, and he pauses only briefly to address you. Mercenary. We need supplies of wood and stone. Go out and find what you can for us. I'm not taking another step in these dreadful mountains until we've established a proper defense. The commander roars to his lieutenant as he, as he hurries back to his tent. Roldan's recklessness led to his downfall and I'll not repeat his mistake. Okay. A squad of soldiers makes ready to accompany you into the wilderness. The men are led by a Captain Alpus, who seems far too young for his gloomy countenance. I hope you know your way around these mountains, he mutters, as you leave the fort together. Sorry, I can't say I do. Okay. You set off into the mountains once more. You gain two fame. You have 20 soldiers with you. Okay, cool. So, so we got a little bit of an army, I suppose. Not really an army. What's this? The ancient path of the mountain leads through light woodlands. Direct the soldiers to gather wood. Alright, cool. Ooh, see, this is the preci precision thing I was talking about. So. Even when things appear impossible, <laughs> keep okay. practicing. The soldiers gather what wood they can before you continue on. You lose one food, you gain 20 wood. Man, that's pathetic. You pass a messenger on the road who gives warning of northern northerner raiding parties in the area. They may already know that we are here, Captain Alpha warns. We should try to avoid facing them directly while we establish our defenses. Okay, cool. Um... Well, that precision event didn't go so well. Um, Alright, let's see what we got. Boom, 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 boom. Hmm. again. I'll just go for the silver, right? The soldiers fell some trees before you continue on. 30 wood? 
<laughs> Yo. <laughs> okay. All right. All that hard work was for naught. Right. These tokens represent the expansion of the game. More options, more cards, more opportunities. He pretty much just explained some, something pretty central to this game. <laughs> you get more cards, you get more, um, more encounters, more weapons, more armor, you know, stuff like that. So here it says, Alistair's Magical Antiquities does steady business in the heart of Iron Peak's Merchant District. The sturdy door creaks open to reveal a showroom cluttered with all manner of oddities, from the wondrous to the bizarre. The clerk peers at you over the top of his reading bi bifocals, bifocals and takes a moment to assess your attire. You're here for work then. Very well. Come in. Come in. I'm in need of a reliable relic hunter. An artifact from the time of tumult was unearthed recently, and there'd be good coin in it if you could prove it had retained any of its enchantments. Interested? Uh, let's ask about his antiqui anti antiquities. Alistair's has operated in Iron Peak since the founding of the city. As you can see, we deal in fine magical antiquities, sourced specifically for our discerning clientele. I don't expect there's anything here that would suit your tastes or budget, but we pay fair prices to anyone capable of expanding our catalog. I'm in need of a reliable relic hunter. Uh, I think he already said that. <laughs> Ask about the job. I deal in rare and wondrous items. It is my business to know when a new one is discovered. The job is straightforward. Travel to the forest, acquire the item, and return it to me. If you can prove that it has some magical properties before you return, and some of that magic yet remains, I will reward you most handsomely. All right, so use the item and leave at least one charge for a greater reward. Okay, cool. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, okay, I accept. Rumors placed the item in a ruin deep in the forests west of Iron Peak. Yes, it's unguarded, but you won't be the only adventurer hoping to recover it. I recommend haste on your part. Okay, cool. And remember, if you can prove that the artifact is enchanted and that it retains some uh, some uh, some its ah <laughs> typo retains some its fabled power. <laughs> I will pay more for that information. There's a typo. You thank the clerk for the lead and set off in the direction of the treasure. All right. As you travel, you will find fame and infamy follow you. Not yet, however. History and time work in strange ways. I'll forgive you visiting such an amateur. Until now, you had no idea what true power was. <laughs> All right. You slowly back out of the hut, careful not to risk the ire of the Dark Magician. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. You struggle to the other side of the river. Well, that's good to know. Uh, I'm like skipping all of the, the dialogue. I shouldn't be doing that. Well done. Oh. Okay. Trouble approaches. Ariadne calls out, trotting back to you and the troops. We're seriously outnumbered. Luckily, though, we have some options for avoiding the brutes. You have stumbled into the path of a northerner raiding party. So, we can attempt to hide in the thick foliage or take a higher, narrower rep trail to avoid them. Let's try to hide. Let's see what happens. Ugh, okay. Oh, that's no, that's a horrible roll. Alright, let's re roll this. Perfect. 
you and the Imperial soldiers fan out among the thick bushes and trees. After a tense few minutes, you realize you managed to avoid detection. Okay, cool. As you make your way back through the walled streets of Iron Peak, you are surrounded by a gang of armed thugs. Stop right there, adventurer. It is I, Myron Sharphands, this world's greatest treasure hunter, their leader boasts. Magical artifacts are my business, and rumor has it you have warlock wraps. I thank you for doing the hard work. Now hand it over. Say that you do not have the item, refuse to give the item, or give the item. Ooh, what should I do? Let's see, so I'm pretty sure that they are gonna jump me and they could rob the item from me if I don't beat them fast enough. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say that I don't have the item. Forgive, forgive us if we don't trust you. The thugs pat you down for the item. Oh, ho, 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 they pat me down. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, that's such a close roll. I need a five. Can I do it? Let's see. Give me a five, give me a five, give me a five. No! <laughs> All right. Sharp hands smiles. Nice try. Now you get to taste. Now, now you get to taste of an art. Okay, sorry. Nice try. Now you get to taste of an artifact of my own. He drops an ornate brass urn on the ground. With a hiss, the urn begins to spew a noxious purple gas that mixes queasily with the city's smog. The gang moves in for the kill. So I have to defeat the enemies before they escape with the item. Huh, that sucks. <sighs> Decisions. Decisions. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Scrupulous and scrupulous, scrupulous, untrustworthy and impeccably stylish. Poisoners deploy a canister that slowly depletes your life. Destroy it with an attack or ranged ability to stop the effect. Let's go. Oh. Took it. <laughs> oh gosh. I should have just brought it back, like, without trying to use it. Despite your best efforts, Myron Sharphands and his gang escape with the prize. Disappointed and a little worse for wear, you dust yourself off and continue on your journey. That sucks. Um. Trouble approaches. So it's pretty much the same event from before. Yeah. So we're gonna hide in a nearby cave. How about that? Ouch. Yes. Okay. You and your Imperial allies head into the darkness of a mountain cave, being careful to hide all trace of your passing. Struggle to the other side. Okay. 
Well, I gotta do it again. This sucks. But I need to go back. Um, let's see. Let's just jump in the nearby river. What is this? Okay. So there's this like slight delay, you know, going on with my controller and everything, you know, so it's just trying to match up with the delay. You and your Imperial allies begin swimming upstream, but are soon spotted. You manage to make it back to shore and prepare for the attack. We can take care of this. We got this. We got this. Yeah. That's the funny thing about this game, you know? Your decisions, they may seem like they're the right thing at the time, and then something goes wrong, you, get, you screw up on a dice roll or something, and then, yeah, things just don't go the way that you uh, would like them to. You could also have allies in those battles too, so it's a little different than Batman Arkham. You got other, other characters there. That was unfortunate, Captain Alpis remarks as you flee into the hills. We don't have time to waste fighting these barbarians. Our job is to build those defenses. If you've ever wondered why the mages organized in my day, half-talented frauds like this one gives you a good idea. He keeps, like, talking crap about this guy. It's so funny. You enter the hut of a local bone man. <laughs> you slowly back out of the hut, careful not to risk the ire of the Dark Magician. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go again. Trouble approaches. Let's see. We're going to try something different. We're going to take a higher, narrower trail to avoid them. Let's see what happens. See, this is what I was talking about. So this is gonna be like a chance thing where they're gonna flip the cards around. They'll flip them over, flip them around, and then I have to choose a, a, a card and either I'm gonna get a success or a failure. But since I picked the blacksmith, Ariadne, um, I get this special perk where I'll, I'll click yes. A Ariadne offers to help so I can say yes. And then I get to duplicate one of the cards. And I wanna duplicate a success card because I would like success not failure so we're gonna copy that that gives us a higher chance of getting the right card and um, there you go you and your imperial allies carefully pick your way along the winding trail you hide behind a rock as the raiders follow the path underneath and then continue through the mountains undetected so the clerk lowers his bifocals as you enter this store. I see Myron Sharphands and his gang got the jump on you. You just missed them, you know. They've already claimed the reward. Jerks. Celebrating their victory at the Hound, I'd expect. Warlock Raps is proudly on display behind the counter. Uh. Unfortunately, I have no other work for you right now. But do come again, won't you? Begrudgingly. That's a perfect word for this situation. You thank the clerk for his time and continue on your journey. Yo. <laughs> ah, the bone man. Yeah, we're leaving. Okay. What am I doing here? I'm trying to build the fences. You receive news of a northerner raid on the Imperial Fort. 63 soldiers were lost. 917 soldiers remain. It's another typo. Lots of typos in this part of the game. Alright. You struggle to the other side of the river. I'm running out of food. 
Oh, word? Okay. Uh, let's see. Should I pick the cave? Take the higher, narrower trail? I'll take the, the, the trail. Yeah, here we go. So, yes. Duplicate this one. Alright, here we go. Ouch. You and your Imperial allies carefully pick your way along the winding trail. You hide behind a rock as the raiders follow the path underneath. One of the Imperial soldiers suddenly slips, sending a clatter of rocks below. You manage to reach a plateau on which to make a stand before the northerners are upon you, bounding up the hillside with ease. Holy smokes, it's a bunch of those guys. Not my best game of um, Hand of Fate 2, but yeah, <laughs> this is definitely not the best. I usually do pretty good after the second or third playthrough, but this this is this is totally blind. Once more. Fortunately, this is but the lesser game, and we can try again. <laughs> Alright, I got something for it. For greatly helping the cart cartographer with his map. Duel, what is this? Man. I got wrecked. So that is a game of Hand of Fate 2. Um, it's probably a good thing I lost because then we didn't have to go on for like an hour, an hour and a half or so. But um, yeah, uh, it's a cool game. You can check it out on the Nintendo Switch, which is what I'm at actually playing it on right now. Um, this controller is also pretty awesome. Uh, the delay that I'm experiencing right now is because of having it hooked up to this, uh, I'm using like a cheap, like $40, capture card so it's kind of gets a little bit of delay through OBS so so yeah um, that's pretty cool uh, you can get Hand of Fate 2 on PC on Steam uh, or on Nintendo Switch I'm not sure if it's on other systems um, I've never really cared to check because I had it on the Switch and that's probably the best place to play it in my opinion I mean unless you're really really picky about graphics and I would say uh, Steam would I'd be, be confused <laughs> Complete these challenges, and we will be ready to face the usurper. Uh, yeah, it's funny how he mocks you throughout the entire game. If you idle too long, he starts mocking you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So that's Hand of Fate Two. <laughs>